Hey everybody, Pastor Josh here with the weekly update for April 10th, 2023. Uh, we had a wonderful Good Friday and Easter weekend. Uh, thank you for everybody that put in extra effort. I know that these are, are the kind of events where there's kids are out of school, families in town. And so to come early, uh, to sort of sacrifice some dinner time to come set up for the Good Friday service and then to, uh, to run sound and to do worship and, uh, and just serve in all those different ways. I really appreciate it. I don't spend enough time thanking you uh, for the time that you give and the effort and the good attitude and the spirit with which uh, you serve the Lord and the church. Uh, so thank you for that. And thank you for those of you on Sunday morning uh, who, who gave up you know, most of your Easter morning to, uh, to prepare to serve. Uh, and, uh, and thank you, Rachel Dodd, for and Alex, you helped a lot too. Carissa, there was a number of you that helped with the Easter egg hunt. Uh, we had a, a lot of people, I don't know, 200 people maybe that came for our Easter egg hunt and uh, really grateful for the opportunity and uh, not many of them stayed, if any, uh, but that's okay. I had lots of conversations about uh, with people who were like, hey, actually, um, we're, we're not prepared to stay. We have some other plans, but we didn't even know there was a church here and uh, we've been looking for a church or, you know, we haven't really been in spiritual things very much. Maybe, maybe this is Maybe this is something we should think about. So I had lots of really fruitful conversations like that that didn't result in like them coming to the service that day. That's sort of a, you know, if they weren't planning to, that's sort of a big ask. Uh, but but just planting seeds, just putting a thought in their head. Uh, they've now recognized some people. They now know where we meet. And, uh, and so thank you for all of you that put in work, especially Rachel. You made it better, and I appreciate that. Uh, we also got to celebrate a couple of baptisms, which is always wonderful on Easter. Um, and, uh, and kicked off our series through the book of Job. Uh, and I knew, uh, in fact, I think that's the most notes that I've ever taken into the pulpit. <laughs> so I knew it was like, oh gosh, this is going to be a, a, a heavy lift, uh, because we're going to Old Testament. We're going, you know, 4,000 years into the past, into a different world, a different way of thinking. And we're being introduced to all of these characters really for the first time in some cases in the Bible. Um, and so God and Satan and Job and and just the world they live in, what the losses mean, and just to sort of like feel the emotion of that takes time. So, uh, so typically you don't want to preach one of your longest sermons ever on Easter Sunday, but uh, that was sort of how the Lord directed that. And, uh, and so we're off and running now, um, and we'll be journeying through the book of Job over the next seven weeks or so. I did order a bunch of those uh, Job uh, scripture journals. I know that many of you really appreciate those. There's room to take notes, and my hope is that over... However many years you're with us with Redeeming Grace, you can just sort of see that that section of the shelf uh, grow as books of the Bible are added to that list, uh, to that shelf, and um, and they kind of provide a bit of a road map of going, this was a certain season in my Christian life where we were looking at James or Genesis or John or the Psalms or Job or, or any other future books. And so just over your time with us, just to see us journeying through the whole Bible and to see that, like, you know, you know, once or twice a year, another book gets put back up on that shelf and we're just walking through the scriptures and it represents seasons in the life of our church and seasons in your life. So that's sort of the spirit behind it. If you don't use them, that's fine. But that's kind of what I'm hoping will happen, at least with a few of us, um, as we just sort of, sort of see the Lord feeding his people, journeying through the scriptures together as a church and being built up and, uh, and strengthened in him. So I'm hoping that those arrive this week. Uh, obviously, you won't uh, have the, the first two chapters in there. You can go back and listen to it again and fill that in if you're really meticulous about that. Or you know, there's plenty of Job, so we'll um, we'll have plenty of opportunity to fill in a lot of those pages. So uh, be praying because Job's a very hard book, very hard book to, to preach, and it's touching all of the sensitive areas of human existence. So uh, to preach it accurately and at the same time be sensitive to the people that are hearing, knowing that everybody is in a different place. Is, uh, is very challenging. So pray for those that, of us that are preaching through this book, that we would handle it well, and that we would trust that the Word will do, um, will do the work that it needs to do, that this is the book that we need to be going through. Uh, and then also just pray, like, sometimes there's a little trepidation that when you're going through a book like this, um, when you feel led to go through a book like this, is this preparation for suffering in our church? Uh, so may we be like Job and be extra vigilant in this time right now where there isn't a ton of of um, of churchwide tragedy or difficulty or suffering. There's some for sure, uh, but just pray because this may be God's kind signal that uh, that maybe something is coming our way. I pray that that's not the case, but uh, sometimes the Lord leads you uh, 
uh, and equips you for something that he's got coming right around the corner. So let's pray for the Lord's protection and kindness, uh, but let's not be afraid that if the Lord assigns us something difficult, that we would stand like Job has stood. And so pray that as this book um, gets into the bloodstream and as we then uh, then see why God wanted this in our bloodstream right now. Uh, we just uh, ask for the Lord's grace and kindness and strength and that he would be glorified through it all. A couple of announcements. We have a, a ne- This week is pretty quiet. Next week has a lot of opportunities to get involved. One is that there's an if table. I have this on my calendar, an if table, a women's gathering uh, Thursday of next week. I think that's the 20th. Uh, I have on the website that it's Leah Coper that's hosting that Thursday evening, April 12th, 20th. So mark your calendars. Ladies, if that's wrong, uh, let me know and I'll correct that and get the right information out. But that's what I have in the system. Ladies would encourage you to go. Uh, Just a great opportunity for fellowship, friendship, connection. Uh, Also, uh, that same uh, weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, April 21st and 22nd, there is a church safety um, training. Uh, So there's a handful of our people that are going to that. It's in New Underwood. And uh, at a church out there, and this will just be thinking through how can we be secure and safe as a church, really from physical threats, intruders, you know, someone were to come in and want to do some sort of physical violence or harm or cause some sort of a scene that was unsafe. Uh, Would we be trained? Would we have people? Would we know who to go to in our congregation that would be trained to be able to intervene and to, uh, and to, uh, to, to do that? So if you have interest in that kind of thing, like just physical safety at our gatherings, then uh, let me know, and we would love to have you uh, jump in on this. Jamie Love is leading that. Uh, he's sort of our point person on the elder board for church safety and security in that regard, and so he's got, I think, four or five people going with him to this training. It is expensive, so if you need help, we as a church, if you want to go, if you'll give your time, we as a church out of our budget will help cover that fee for you. Um, so that's happening uh, April 21st and 22nd. That's a Friday, Saturday. We also have the Secret Church simulcast. We've done that, uh, I think, the last several years. We used to do it at South Canyon when I was there. Um, and this is a, it's going to go through the book of Job. It's also going to be looking at the um, at the uh, persecuted church and how to pray for the persecuted church. Uh, so really, the idea of Secret Church is that we would gather uh, in solidarity with those who are gathering in secret, those who are gathering in persecuted countries. So we're going to gather kind of like they do. And have an extensive time of Bible study. Because that's what happens with persecuted Christians. Is they get together. And then they often spend many, many hours together studying the Bible. It's not just an hour or an hour and a half service. We're kind of lightweights here in America. In terms of our the intensity and the attention span of our of our hearts and our souls for the word of God. Uh, but in, in persecuted places, they may not be able to gather very often. And so they, they are hungry. And so this is us kind of meeting in solidarity. What's it like to gather in a smaller gathering, sort of secretly, although it's not very secret, but, um, but but and then to study God's word for hours together. And so we're going to go through the book of Job. It takes a, the, the whole events about four to five hours of just Bible study in the book of Job and prayer, prayer for the persecuted church and learning more about it. So if you're willing to give an evening, uh, April, what is that? April 21st, it'll be here at the ministry center. We'll have some snacks. We'll, we'll gather together and it'd be great if this, uh, if this place was packed out just trying to uh, think along the lines of persecuted Christians who are having to gather in uncomfortable places and then to learn about them, to pray for them, and to have the kind of intense Bible study that they long for, they desire for, that they risk their lives for. And so um, if you would like to come and be a part of that, uh, sign up on our website for that. And then lastly, if you're in 6th through 12th grade, uh, we have signed up to go to Estes Park, Colorado, one of the most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion and be a part of Student Life Camp. I'm really excited about the speaker they have, the worship leader they have, and just the activities, the Bible study, the theme. Everything looks like it's going to be really great. So we would love to uh, take you for a week of camp uh, in Estes Park, Colorado, and that is June 18th through the 23rd. Uh, It does cost a good amount of money, um, and so you can see that on the website. At least put your name down if you would like to go. We can figure out the money sort of along the way if you need some help. I'm more interested in having you go than necessarily getting all the money uh, for that. So, so I just would love to have um, a bunch of our students uh, go to that um, in a little church plant. There's often not much of a youth ministry. In fact, everything is set, seems to be sort of focused on everything but the students. And I'm really grateful. I think, I, I think in some ways that's good for our students to not have everything catered to them. But I also know that it's nice to have something, an intensely focused, speaking to the issues 
and, um, and bringing the gospel to bear on the season of life that they're in. And would love to, as your pastor, just to set aside a week where my full attention, my, my thoughts, my prayers, my time, uh, have fun with you, uh, to, to have one week out of the year where it's just like your pastor has your full attention and wants to minister to you. And so um, would love to have that opportunity. And, uh, and so if you're interested in that, uh, let me know. We've, got, we've still got plenty of spots. I think we still got seven or eight spots. Um, so um, let me know. Uh, ideally, by the end of this month would be great because I think I have to turn in some names and, uh, and would, would like to not have to pay for spots that aren't filled, but I'd love for all those spots to be filled. So, all right. Thank you for listening to this update video. Thank you for all the good work that's happened. Keep praying for those that are looking to join our church, those who are thinking about baptism, those who have recently come to faith in Christ. There's so many awesome things that are happening. God is working in the midst of our church and, uh, and ask around a little bit. Um, I don't often share a lot of stories on here because I'm not sure everybody wants their full story on the internet, uh, but ask around. And it's always wonderful when people get to tell their story of how God's at work in their life. So just reach out to someone and go, hey, how has God be a, been at work in your life? And you might realize that, hey, I just realized that I wasn't a Christian. And I came to faith in just the last few months, or I've been really wrestling through uh, what was taught in James. And, uh, and, and here's how I'm growing. Here's how, here's how I'm changing. Uh, so ask around, ask around in the church and make this a common question. How are you growing spiritually or how are you doing spiritually? Where are you? Where are their struggles? Where are the challenges? Where are you seeing God at work? Where are you encouraged? Where are you discouraged? Make spiritual conversations um, and not just the weather, the spiritual conversations, the norm in our church and ask around because there's some cool stories that I'm hoping you'll get to hear from the people themselves and not just through me. So, all right. I love you. Have a great week. We'll see you uh, sometime next Sunday.